I'm gonna need you to do some database cleanup here because we canceled a couple projects. We have all these tasks that I need you to go manually clean up and delete. This is the worst. I hate manual work. Please tell me there's a better way. There is a better way to do this, and it's with an automation. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours get up and running on Airtable and integrated with your business applications. Now, for this example, I'm going to use the project tracker template that Airtable has out of the box. This is going to work with any base that you create. You just need to change the tables that you're using. So if you want to follow along, you can use the same template. Okay, I have to be honest, I don't love the way these tables are named. We've got tasks, timelines, and assignees. This is really just tasks, we can think about it. And then we have overview, and overview is going to be our projects. So imagine we have projects here, and then we have tasks that are connected to, or they're linked to their projects. So in this case, we have three different tasks that are associated with our project of brand refresh and design. So we'll essentially want to signal on our project that this project has been canceled, and then we'll want to have our automation go ahead and delete those children tasks. Over on our projects table, we're going to want to make a quick change to the status field. I'm going to add an option to indicate that this project has been canceled. We'll change the color here so that it's a little bit darker. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new field. I'll insert this to the right and we're going to call this project ID. This will be a formula field type so we can select that and then we're just going to plug in record ID. You can select this and close that parenthesis and that's going to give us this unique value, this unique identifier for each of those specific records. This is going to help us as we build our automation make sure that we're working with the correct project and their tasks. Now back on the tasks table, we're going to add another field as well. And here, this is also going to be called project ID because we're going to look up to our corresponding project and pull that value back of the project ID. So in this case, we are going to use a lookup. We'll click on lookup, we'll look to our projects, and then this is where we're gonna plug in our project ID. We can create that field. So you can see that because this is all the same project, even though we have three tasks, that project ID remains exactly the same for those three tasks. Next, let's go into our automations and start to build this out. So I've created just a shell of one here, delete tasks for canceled projects, and we'll add a trigger for this. Let's do when record matches conditions, and we're going to select a table. This is again going to be that overview or the projects table. And then we can choose a condition. And we're gonna say when that status is canceled, that's going to be the trigger for this automation. Now at this point, you might be thinking, oh great, let's go ahead and add our action. We can create a record, we can update a record. Now we can delete, oh wait, we can't delete a record. This actually isn't an action available to us out of the box from Airtable. If I had to hypothesize, my guess is the reason why is because just imagine their poor support team. If you suddenly had people who had automations that were constantly deleting records and people didn't know where their data was going, even though we can restore that data, it still is gonna cause a lot of nightmares. So it's important to be very careful that you know what you're doing, what you're deleting, and that you're only deleting a very specific set of records based on certain conditions. We don't want to go willy-nilly and delete tons of data in the system. So just make sure that you're thinking through that process. And because we don't have that option and out of the box action, what we're going to do is run a script. Oh no, did he say run a script? I don't know how to code. What am I gonna do? We've got you covered. So if you want, you can click on the link below and we've got a bunch of templates. This is really simple, it's three lines. So you can just copy and paste this directly, but we've got some other templates on our website you might want to take a look at as well. So you can either copy and paste this information or you can go ahead and type it along with me in the video. Now before we create our script, I'm actually going to run a find records step. If you've watched other videos or tutorials or searched in the community about how to do this, a lot of the other tutorials skip this step. I take a little bit of a difference of an approach here because I've seen a lot of solutions for this where essentially the solution's pretty hard coded. It's dependent on a checkbox being checked for this, or we can only have a certain kind of field or it works a certain kind of way. In our case, we wanna make this more flexible. We want you as the user, as the admin of Airtable, to be able to update this how you want and the code stays pretty much the same. So by using a find record step, we could add additional conditions to this if we wanted. So for example, maybe you want to find the tasks and delete only the tasks where the status of the task is not yet completed. That could be an additional use case. So rather than updating our code to accomplish that, 
We're going to find the records that we need, and then we're going to take those records and pass them into our script. So the point of this find records step is to find those children tasks that we want to delete. So the table that we're going to search from is going to be that tasks, timeline, and assignees. And then from here, we're going to find records based on a condition. Now, this is where it comes in handy to have those project ID fields that we added at the beginning. So I'm going to add a condition and we're going to say when the project ID contains, and then instead of doing a static value, we'll change this to dynamic and we'll say when this contains, and this is from the triggering step, we're looking for that project ID. So if the project ID from that initial triggering record matches the lookup value in those tasks, which it will, then those are the tasks that we want to delete. Let's go ahead and test our action to make sure that it finds these correctly, the tasks. You'll want to make sure that you have a project that's set to cancel. And here we go. It found those three tasks that are all connected to our triggering project. Cool. So at this point, we're ready for our script. So we're going to add another action here, and this will be to run a script. The first thing I'm going to do here is add an input variable, and I'm going to just call this record IDs. And what we're going to do is we're going to get those records from the find records step to be able to pass into this script to use. And so the value, we can click the little blue plus button. We're going to choose that find records step. And from here, if you scroll down, there should be an option to make a new list of Airtable record IDs. So we don't need all the records themselves. We don't care about all the additional fields. At this point, we just want it to be a list or an array of those record IDs. So this should work perfectly. You can see here's a record ID, comma, another record ID. This is exactly what we want. We can delete out this top line of code. We don't need that. And then here is where you can use that template and copy and paste in this code. So we'll start with const and then table, and we'll set this equal to base. And then we've got base dot get table. And then in parentheses here, here's where we put in the name of the table itself. So here we can choose, this is nice. It gives us a little drop down here and we need to choose from the tasks table, not the projects table. So we've input that, make sure that we have it in quotes here and we'll put a semicolon. This step is to define the table that these tasks are a part of so that we can go ahead and delete them. Next, let's grab those record IDs. And instead of calling it record IDs, I'm going to just call it records to delete, just to be clear about what we're doing here. And then we'll set this equal to our input.config. And we can grab then the record IDs from this. So this now takes that list of record IDs that we just had. And the last step here is to call this table dot delete records async. You can see that this is good for up to 50 records. Just make sure you grab the right one. This is plural delete records async. And at this point, we are going to pass in our records to delete into that and we'll add a semicolon there. So this is basically saying, hey, we know which table it is. Use that delete records async action and we're going to do that to the records to delete that we're passing in here. Now, this is a really simple example and that's why I talked about using that find records step because we could add additional conditions there to find the tasks that we're looking for. If you do need to extend this, there's lots of different things that we can do. So for example, this is limited to 50 tasks. If you need to iterate through more tasks, that's something that we can help extend for you as well if you have any questions about the script itself. Okay, so at this point, we should be good to go. Let's test that. And our test ran successfully, so it should have deleted these. We're going to finish editing, and then let's go ahead and turn this on. We should be good to go. And then I'm going to change this project back to kickoff status. I'm going to go into my trash real quick just to make sure. Yep, so we actually deleted these. I'm going to restore them, so we've got them back here. So here are our three tasks that this should find on our behalf. Let's go ahead and cancel our project. So we'll change that to a status of canceled. We'll head on over here and we can see, there we go, it's deleted our tasks for us. So that's how we can take a script and have a process that we can automatically delete children records that we find via an automation. For some of you, this might be your first taste of scripting and some of you are like, I love this, there's so much I can do. And others of you are like, I hate this, I never wanna to touch it again. But I appreciate you watching because I think this can come in handy for a lot of people to have a nice little script and automation that can quickly delete those tasks. If you have any questions about your own Airtable setup or you need some assistance, don't hesitate to reach out to our website, automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.